coming to you from the boutique. <sighs> I'm feeling good. I'm in grounding energy. I'm cleaning. I'm super, super cleaning. I'm going to bust out the Palo Santo and the sage because I feel energetically it needs to be cleansed in here again. It feels a little yucky. <sighs> so... What I wanted to talk to you guys about today is kids and when they see things, okay? Woo! When I was younger, um, I would see a lot of things, okay? Your kids are going to see a lot of things. Um, kids usually see a lot more than we do because as we grow up, as we go to school, as we get jobs, as we do all this stuff, we're kind of like programmed to think a certain way. Well, kids, everybody says kids, dang, they have no filter. That's true, boo. They do not have a filter, you know. Um, I remember one time, you know, my sister was, you know, saying something and she basically was like, big O, big O, big O, big O, you know. And my mom's like, what? Did you just call me that? And my sister's like, no, I said, Migo, Migo, Migo. <laughs> they have no filter. So, when your kids come to you, sorry guys, I know I have a little bit of glare here. Okay, there we go. When your kids come to you and they say they see things, you should really, really listen to them. Because again, kids have no filter and they're closer to source and basically, kids are not as programmed as adults. So that's why, of course, adults don't believe. And kids, you know, they say, oh, you have a wild imagination. You know, a lot of people think that imagination and creativity and dreaming and all that is like woo-woo, I guess people can say that it's not real it's very real it is so real that we don't even want to fathom and comprehend it right now so as adults will be like no 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 that's fake okay that's not fake i just saw a human being i saw a full body in the house <laughs> and then it's gone so your kids will pick up on energies they will see things they will feel things they will hear things um, don't ignore that. You really, really need to work with your kids. Um, the best thing my mom ever did for me was listen. And it's really cool, too, because I like going in these certain groups, like one specifically the empaths and stuff. There are so many more parents that are a lot more aware. <laughs> like there was a, somebody put something on there. My kids came to me crying saying, Mommy, there's a monster. And mommy was like, say less. Started busting out the sage and cleansing right away. That's how it should be. That is really how it should be. <laughs> because again, the kids, um, why would they make something up like that? You know, yes, there are certain kids that will tell stories, you know, because they want attention or whatever. Um, but if you communicate with your kids, you will find out so much. Now, when you communicate, um, I know I've had to learn from experience, and there are people, you know, that will too. When we were younger, my family, we didn't really communicate. So everybody kept everything in. You know, we, we didn't say anything. Well, when I was about 12 or 13, the bear came to the family, <laughs> my stepdad. And it was so annoying, but it's cool now. Uh, I love him. He's awesome. We would have freaking family meetings. I know. I know. So we would have family meetings and he's like, girls, we're having a meeting and quiz. I'm like, oh my. Why is this going to matter? Because what you say is just going to be the end result anyway. You know, of course, that's me, you know, being, being a kid and him being the adult and having that energetic dynamic. Everybody has that. That's a part of life and we experience it. So now what I do in, in my life, I didn't realize um, I will have meetings. 
you know. Um, I usually do consults and I do stuff online, but um, I didn't realize that normally for people to properly communicate, you should have a meeting and it should be face to face, you know. Um, and I've learned from experience that a lot of people don't like that. <laughs> uh, especially if you come with a folder and you look like you're about some business and they're like, oh. Um, that's just the type of person that I am. Uh, um, so talk to your kids, you know, have a family meeting or be like, hey, let me talk to you about something real quick. You know, ours is very like, eh, 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 eh. Hear ye, hear ye, everybody, you know. So the whole house shut down and we're like, nah, we're having a family meeting right now. Nobody can come over to play. Bye, you know. <laughs> um, talk to your kids. Have them write. Have them write. Color. Draw. What do they see? Because now what I do is, you know, on all the little notes or whatever that I write, yes, fine, okay. <laughs> um you go back and you can see your progress and you can also see you're like, whoa, when I started seeing these things is actually when this ability started to come out and you can actually work with your kids on that too. Now there's a friend that I have. He has a crystal baby. She is telepathic. We communicate without words. I don't know if he fully believes me or not. It's cool. That's you, boo. Um... <laughs> But I remember one time, because I picked her up, and she's so cute. I picked her up, and she has these crystal eyeballs, crystal blue, that just, like, glisten. And, and when the light hits it, it's almost like you could see. Yeah. So I picked her up one time, and she was moving around and, like, squirming. And I was like, down? Do you want to get down? Do you want to get down? Down? And then I said in my head, down? And she's like, yes. I'm like. I, I, here, put you down, shit. You know, <laughs> because I didn't think she was actually going to really respond to me, and she did without the words. I'm like, yeah. So <laughs> don't be surprised. I still even get freaked out. You know, I'll be like, down, and she's down. I'm like, um, <laughs> they will hear things, too, you know, in the house, like uh, certain words, um, phrases, or whatever. And then they may even see, like, past family members. Um, I remember I had seen a family member, two family members, on anniversaries of their death. They were, of course, normally when we see things, when we see things that are not in this realm or in this dimension, whatever you want to call it, um, it's through our peripherals. So if you look at your hand right now, like I am, see, if you guys get your hand, okay, and look at your hand, but then look up at the screen. So as you're watching this video right now, you know, you should have your hand kind of in front of you, but keep looking at the camera, okay? So now get that hand and move it in front of you, but don't look directly at it. Do you see anything around that hand? Don't look directly at the hand, but look at me and keep your hand moving. That is your energy. Those disturbances or those impressions or whatever, it would probably even look like the heat on a floor from far away. Like if you're looking, like if you're in Arizona, right? And you're driving down the street and you're like, dang, it's hot. And you see like them hot lines coming from the ground that look like they're going to radiate you. That's what it would look like. It's, it maybe even look like a smoke or a water type of feel or even like these little thingies here that you see from a window. So it won't be all up in your face. It's very subtle, very subtle. And of course, you know, you have to quiet your mind and calm down, bring it down a bit, you know. So if you just get home and your kid's like, mama, mama, I saw, you know, don't blow them off. But go back to them and talk to them about it and be like, hey, so, you know, mom settled in now. It took about an hour for my parents, you know, to like settle in or whatever. And I remember this, too, because my mom worked two jobs. And when I had seen the first impressions or family members, if you want to call them, uh, she had came home from work. And it was really late. 
And it was actually the next morning I talked to her about it because I didn't see her that night. So I told her, I was like, hey, mom, can I tell you something? She's like, yeah, what's up? And I was like, I saw something in the house yesterday. And she goes, what do you mean? And she didn't like, what do you mean? Somebody was in there. Did you let somebody in the house? You know, she didn't get defensive or jump or anything. She was just very open and was like, well, what did you see? You know, so I started telling her about the, now I know what it is, the two relatives. And she's like, wow, really, Miha? I'm like, yeah. She goes, wow. So I want to say a few days later, she talked to me about it again because she kind of was like reaching out to family members. I'm pretty sure she was like trying to figure out like who the did Oni see in the house, you know? I know she didn't let nobody in the house because I said, even if it's me knocking at the door, don't open the door. <laughs> That's how my mom was. She'd be like, if it's me and I left my key, don't do it. I'm like, sorry, mom. You messed up. You left your key. So that's how G she was. And <laughs> so a few days later, she's like, hey, Mihan, did you see those people in the house again? And I was like, no, I just saw them for a little bit. And then they went away. And she's like, oh, okay. Do you know that those were family members? And I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, that was your nana and that was your tío. And I'm like, what? So then my mom starts to tell me that I believe it was my nana Esther and my tío. I don't know if she said there was a tío Alex or not tío Turi because tío Turi, I remember him. He had this the scratchy beard. Um but this Theo was so light complected that he looked he looked white, you know. Um, and you know they're Spanish, Hispanics, you know, everywhere. Um, but he was. My mom told me he was in the war or something. He was he fought. So when I saw him, I saw him in the fatigues, and he was still wearing the hat. So. I don't know if I had seen him, you know, I don't know how he passed, but sometimes they'll come to you or you will see them um, wearing certain things that maybe they, that they really resonated with. So my Theo was in the war. That's probably why I saw him in his fatigues, his army, you know, the camo stuff. And then my Nana she actually, I remember she had like white hair and she basically was like in a white muumuu. So her final days, she was wearing the white, the white muumuu, the white gown. And then I even remember growing up, there were pictures with her in there too. So honestly, I really don't remember meeting her. So some people could say, oh, well, you just made it up in your mind because you never met her and you wanted to see her. I can see how that would happen, but honestly, I wouldn't have any reason to want to meet or to create that, you know? So it was just very weird how those two family members just appeared, you know, and my mom automatically knew who they were. So talk to your kid, have them write the stuff. Um, now that I think back, I'm thinking like when I was a kid, I definitely should have kept all of my stuff I do have some things that I look back at and I'm like whoa dude what the heck like there's a book I wrote in school and it's called uh fighting Carrie and fighting Carrie actually is right there I'll show you and fighting Carrie kind of trips me out because this is actually what I've shared with you guys before that I'll travel and go to different places different cultures different times different you know just so you know, these are the library, library, the boutique, and up over here too. <laughs> but, so this is Fighting Carrie. Yeah, she look, she look a little familiar, huh? <laughs> so, and it's so cute because there's like misspellings and there's just, you can totally tell that a kid did this. So, basically... Like I was sharing with you guys, I would travel to other planets, other pyramids, times, you know, all that stuff. Um, 
Yeah, it's definitely all totally misspelled. This book is dedicated to my mom, dad, brother, and two sisters. There's a girl, her name is Carrie. She likes space and Egyptian stuff and ocean stuff so much. She went to Egypt and fought a mean and evil god. His name was General. So they fought for days and hours until three days came. Then General stopped and fell on the floor. And all the people thanked Carrie. That's Carrie flying. <laughs> but she couldn't get home, so she thought so hard. She flew home. See, this girl was like, look, I need to get home. Boop. And just got there. <laughs> Who thinks of that, though? So, again, your kids are on point. Your kids, no filter, right? Uh, then after that, she fell asleep for two whole solid days. And when she woke up, she was in the ocean. Two whole solid. Like, not half, but solid, you know? <laughs> a sea lion was swimming. She saved them because a shark was right there. She was like, Whoosh. let me swerve over here real quick and just get these sea lions, you know? Then after that, she vanished. <laughs> and a comet was getting ready to hit Saturn, but she threw it far, far away. She's like, nah, I got you, boo. And she flew back home. And that's basically it. So yeah, planets and stars. So your kids, your kids, work with your kids. Ask your kids questions. Ask them what they see. Oh, ask them what they feel. Because if your kids start to experience things or they pick up on things that they don't like, that is when you start to really work with your kids and tune into their intuition with them and say, hey, if there's a feeling that you don't like, my dad, Wes, would say, if you don't like a certain situation, remove yourself. Or don't put yourself in that situation in the first place. And that is why I have made a decision to not see a certain side of the family and have healthy boundaries between this family. Because yes, family is family, right? And sometimes you need to learn how to put up those boundaries and sometimes they may even need to do that with you too. So listen to your kids, your kids work with your kids and then you will start to see the more and more that you talk to them and work with them, they're going to start to see a lot more. So if you guys have any questions at all, if you want any tips or tricks or anything at all on how to work with your kids or maybe how to develop them more, please let me know. Because, um, again, I have a book and I'll go off of certain things to where I'm like, okay, yeah. Lots of people are talking about ascension symptoms, you know. But if you guys genuinely really want some stuff to help your kids and to work with them, definitely let me know and I will make more stuff. You know, if there's something specific like um, intuition, hearing things, sleeping, dreams, I just whatever you're experiencing, drop it down there. Let me know, please, you know, because I don't know if you don't tell me. But... I hope you guys have a good day and ground and balance and get some sage in your life. Bye.